You're the story of the tale of a man. This is the story of the tale of a man named Argo. And you are going to find out what happened to him. In the first floor of the halls of despair, Argo found a staff of twilight. Dispatching his enemies with great skill, Argo proceeded to the next room, wand in hand. Argo was clearly too fast for them, and he leveled up. And so, he decided to rest and decide how he wanted to improve himself. And since he didn't have any spells, he decided to get uh, this one. As he bounded through the ziggurat, he found himself in another room and accidentally fell off a cliff and took no damage. Having picked up some green ammo, he decided to switch weapons and kill these annoying creatures a little bit faster. It was very, very successful. Well done, Argo. I can tell you are going to go far. That's the second time I used that joke. It's twice as funny. Argo found himself in a puzzling situation. Two corridors. One of them very likely a dead end. And he chose the right one the first time. Waiting for the fire to die, he realized that he didn't choose the right one the first time. And now that he was actually paying attention, he could see the end. And he found a chest. It had a, a gun in it. And an enemy. Even better. So now he had two weapons. Argo was twice as dangerous. Entering a new room, it was very large. It had some annoying creatures in it that bounced. Having collected enough uh, souls from Ziggurat, Argo found himself growing more powerful. He decided to go take a rest and decided that the that the souls that he would collect from his enemies would be more educational because he thought about that being the case. Crossing a bridge that led to a pillar over fire, he found a scroll. It had words written on it. Argo found himself face to face with the boss of this level. Who immediately injured him. Twice. No, wait, three times. There was never a fourth time. Argo decided to take a break, and he figured that getting more mana from each gem was probably a useful thing to do, so he decided he would get more mana that way. The portal took him to the quarry. The quarry is ours! And it wasn't really a quarry because it was another part of the ziggurat where he found a spell that shot fire. He decided to immediately test it out on some annoying creatures that were leaving. And a skeleton that reminded him of some creatures he'd read about. Perhaps he'd seen something like that before. And entered the next room. And failed. Failed his first shot on everything that he aimed at. He continued to fail for another minute before deciding to get slightly closer. And then he realized that the explosion also kind of hurt him a little bit. Having defeated them so soundly, he entered another room with confidence. But there was another creature waiting for And they did splash damage, just like Argo did with his gun. So he decided to use his shotgun. By which I mean magic power, Which was very effective. Taking a moment to breathe, he decided that he wanted uh, more magic for his staff. So he went to the next room with it in his hand. And, and this room was draining his magic. The rest of the enemies were fools. And 
really barely even scratched him. But he was almost out of mana, just because the room was a jerk. Argus decided to bunny hop forwards to the next challenge. He found himself in a large room with purple gems that he decided to pick up. Argus decided he was running low on uh, the staff magic, so he decided to shoot with his spell, which was probably much better suited to the imps that he was facing. And he decided to take a moment uh, to make sure that future endeavors would gain him more uh, experience. Argo picked up the portal key and decided to go into the next room. And shot the skeleton right in the face. It was very sad. Argo realized that his attempts to make himself level up faster were paying off. And so he decided to continue the trend. Bunny hopping to the next room. Argo hoped that he didn't have to face the boss too soon. But he didn't. He actually ran into the graveyard. Deciding he had enough mana, he, deci he decided to, to decide to give up some spell mana for the potential bonus, which he got. His maximum health increased, which emboldened him to sacrifice a little bit of health. Which really didn't do much. After that, he decided to risk praying to another and to see what he would get for nothing. Which he was given the ability to learn faster one time. Argo, as he bunny hopped, realized that perhaps he shouldn't have give up, given up any health because that's pretty useful in not dying. In an attempt to destroy some ugly looking ob obelisk, it was totally ruining the feng shui of the room that he was in. Uh, Argo brought out his magic staff and used his, uh, used his medallion for the first time to try and get more uh, magic to shoot thing. It was, he just decided it was a good idea, okay? You don't have to question everything that he does. Take it, take it from me, he knew what he was doing. And so he continued to learn faster, because he was getting smarter all the time. Bunny hopping into the next room, he looked at his map and realized this was the only place he hadn't gone yet, and it was the portal. But in order to open the portal, he had to defeat Poloco, the master shop. He was trying to kill the boss as fast as possible. So that he wouldn't have to deal with continual damage. And as the as the boss fell, he collected up as much as he could, and then took a moment to rest and decide that he wanted to learn even faster. So he jumped into the portal. As he entered the cursed cathedral, he found himself face to face with an undead scepter. Deciding he liked it sound of it and thought it sounded and looked cooler, he, uh, picked it up and left the Eye of Twilight cautiously into the next room and decided to try out his new weapon by getting close and floating a carrot in his face. One of the new enemies he was facing in this floor was annoying fish. Argo wondered if these things would be the death of him. Then he took a moment and uh, decided he needed to be sturdier in order to survive such attacks. Switching to his shotgun, Argo went into another room and noticed the fire right away. And an imp came out of nowhere. This particular encounter was costing him quite a bit of well-being. He found some of those thingies. And he decided to risk not getting anything, and he got really punished for it. And he used 
is. And here's this amulet just there. It gives you one more mana. I picked up a portal key and proceeded cautiously to a uh, crate that has a spotlight on it, which gave him a bunch of experience for no reason. Argo took a moment to appreciate a pretty stained glass window, and then he tried to shoot at it, and it didn't do anything. Not even a scratch, a scorch mark, nothing. As he entered the next room, Argo noticed the entire floor was made of spike traps. In the next room, Argo fought against a bunch of mushrooms. Yes, mushrooms. Argo dispatched them without much trouble. But they didn't really drop any health potions or anything, so it didn't feel like much of a victory. Argo decided to increase his health limit. And also, uh, and also how much magic the gems gave him when he picked them up. And yes, yeah, he yeah, in the next room. There were some skeletons. They had armor on them. That really didn't help them all that much. He cautiously entered to the next room, staff in hand. Which turned out to be the right choice because there was another one of those ugly obelisks that was like right in the middle, the middle of the room. So we decided to blow it up. It gave him some health and a bunch of ammo, so he decided these things weren't all that bad. Argo made the right choice. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. I like great crowd control. By control, I mean killing, you know, because it kills things. He took a moment to reflect on all of the good he was doing before deciding that potions should do more and that mana gems should do more. Switching to his rifle once again, he accidentally stepped in some lava, and he found himself looking into the boss room, which he didn't want to go yet. And he found a large hallway with annoying looking plants. The plants mock with their homing projectiles. Argo wanted homing projectiles. And there was a plant that kept, kept turning invisible so he tried and failed to jump over a pit and then walked up the stairs. Annoyed. And then stepped in some lava again and cursed himself. Stupid Argo. Step seven lava. When he thought about it, Argo was on like the third floor and clearing the last room before the boss and in pretty good condition all things considered. He was definitely gonna get to the fourth floor. I mean, definitely. Come on, like, what's really stopping him at this point? Besides Adam, the prime golem, he used his, he used his medallion for no reason because he like killed the boss anyways. Well, he was full on staff magic, he leveled up again, and he decided to increase his health limit one last time. And then he decided that uh, breaking things to get health was probably going to be useful at this point. On the fourth floor, he noticed the bomb. He threw one. And it was really just an explosion. He decided to use his rifle instead because it was a little more direct. And his arm got tired after only two throws because he wasn't like an athlete or anything. He's a freaking wizard. I mean, let's get real here. Argo looked around and realized this room was kind of like pointless. And he found himself in a very large room. Slimes. But Argo triumphed. And looking around this large room, he decided what he really needed was to recover a little bit of health every time he started a fight. And then, uh, some more magic would be helpful. And then he entered a room that he decided he wanted to bother with later, but then he figured he might as well do it now. As he went through, he looked into a, a big hallway and immediately got greeted by one of those officers. And he opened it, it dropped health. It dropped a little bit. He was not really making any progress on those officers because he apparently missed one that was like right there the whole time when he entered the room. 
trying to hide. With the room cleared, Argo looked around and realized that he'd actually recovered some health from that somehow. And he decided he could always use more mana and more health. And then he noticed he was going into another room that looked exactly like the one he just left. Obelisks and all. Argo sighed and hoped that he'd get, gain more health from this than the last one. Apparently these imps got really hung up on these lava pits. Argo decided that he would increase his alchemy mana and then and then recover more mana or health at the beginning of every fight because he had a tendency of getting pretty low switching to his magma rifle. Argo entered a room that decided that his weapons worked slower. You know, just arbitrarily. Because the rooms could do that. There were some flying armors that were throwing fireballs and were leaving fire behind, which Argo didn't like at all. He got really close and used the all fire on his magma rifle. Entering the next room, Argo decided to look at his map and figured that this room was probably a dead end. Like, if you were gonna kill Argo, just, like, do it. Do it directly and not through annoyance. It's hard to kill people by annoying them to death. Argo had tried. It was one of the reasons he began studying magic all those years ago. And he went, went into a library looking room. And then he read a, a thing. And uh, it revealed that the carrots weren't actually carrots, they were mandrakes. So he upgraded his potions once again. And then he decided to get a little bit of mana at the beginning of every fight. Because he could just decide to do that. But traversing the trap room once again, Argo realized that he had been neglecting read all these magnificent books, some of which dropped mana. Argo entered a room and instantly noticed there were some purple gems to grab, so he decided to focus on doing that first. Once he had enough, they just sort of all disappeared. The slimes produced little of use. Of course, he noticed as he went into a new room, that switching to his magma rifle was exactly the perfect thing to do. As he finished cleaning up, Argo decided to look at what he could do, and he decided to get more help at the beginning of each battle, and to increase his staff magic, because it was very useful and he wanted more of it. He entered another hallway with books, and he decided to to spend a few hours reading them all, out of which he felt slightly better. And then there was another room where he had to play hop in order to defeat the attack. It wasn't that different from usual, really. Without collecting up all of the uh, knowledge crystals he could, Argo grabbed his staff and investigated a chest, which laughed at him, gave him some help. But turns out, Hitting a bunch of enemies and slowing them down simultaneously, it's fairly effective. As he entered another room completely filled with books, he stopped to read them all and realized that his health was getting very high. He looked at his map before entering the next room and noticed this was the final room before leaving this floor. He had to fight a really big ugly creature. Without even really taking much damage, Argo dispatched his foe and <laughs> wished that he could carry health potions with him. But alas, he left his belt at home. Entering the portal, he entered a new floor. The final floor. And there was another staff. It was the Eye of Twilight. It came back for him. But he decided he liked his scepter perfectly fine, so he rejected the eye twilight once again. He was very, very disappointed with it. 
And then he decided to upgrade his staff. And then upgrade how much health he got at the beginning of each fight. Entering the next room, he noticed there were very, very uh, pitiful traps. And then there was another one of those stupid wooden bridges that led to a pillar over lava. And then there was a, a scroll on top of the pillar that had words on it, probably. As Argo entered the next room, you know, just it was another one of those rooms with officers in it. But he was pretty much full on health and mana, so it really just seemed like a chore. I, I, you know what? I forgot what I was talking about. Well, anyways, you know, Argo. Argo is going through the last floor. And he entered the room with mushrooms. But the room was mushy. As he looked around and checked his map, he realized this was a dead end. Argo had two choices. He decided to pick one of those choices. And he entered a room. And then he peeked into the next room and bet on himself that there was going to be an obelisk, so he switched to his staff. And he was right, he called it. Argo was a genius. Stopped to check how he was doing. He realized his health was dwindling. It was a good thing that health potions were as useful as they were. So he just had to get more health and more mana per encounter. Uh, as he peeked into the next room, he realized it was the final room of this floor. And he wasn't ready for it yet. As Argo was fighting, he noticed that he was actually gaining health from the way he ran it. He was really losing it. And he realized this was probably the one, one of the most pathetic fights that he'd fought in a while. Argo was just that good. Argo wasn't looking forward to running out of staff. Man. So he tried a few weapons to see what worked better. Argo almost decided to take a rest on a spiked trap and then noticed it wasn't even activating until he entered the next room. Using the alt fire on his weapon cleared out some bad guys a lot faster. And then he re realized that it was kind of like using a bigger version of his scepter. But it was okay. He killed them without much trouble. Argo took a break and decided to level up. And then he noticed a new and interesting type of room. One completely filled with lava that he had to jump over. He burned himself a few times, but finally made it to the end, which had a bunch of health and an upgrade. Argo entered one of the last rooms, and it completely turned to dark. Shamans weren't particularly strong, though. Argo left, and went straight to what he believed to be the final room before the boss. And it was another one of those. <laughs> Argo sacrificed half of his uh, magma rifle ammo to get different weapons, but it really only gave him one different weapon. Argo kinda got nerfed. He decided to run straight for the boss. This was going to be the final encounter. Either he won here or lost here. There was no alternate. The final boss was losing health faster than Argo was. So Argo figured he was probably going to win. Especially since he was now getting 
stand it back or don't leave with it. Which means you just keep using this weapon, this preferred weapon. Without having to go with this system. Yeah, so long as you got him. Which he did. At least I think he was saying that. Maybe it was just because that guy was dropping him. Starting to get sloppy. It was an even fight. Argo needed to sort of put some distance between him and the bad guys. He was probably going to die at this point. And he did. That's how Argo died. I bet you didn't think he was going to lose at the end. Argo certainly didn't. Maybe if he'd used his magma rifle. But Argo was too dead to care about details. And that's how Argo died. <laughs>